Welcome back to the 100th episode of the Girl Power Alliance podcast. <laughs> we are beyond excited to be here with you today on the 100th episode. It's also a really special episode because it's Thanksgiving week. I'm so honored to be here with these two amazing partners. If you guys could be a fly on the wall to our conversations, you're, you'd just be like, like your mind would be blown. I have the incredible, talented, beautiful creative director, Ferris C here, co-founder of Girl Power Alliance. Say hello. How are you? How are you? <laughs> yeah. And we have our growth strategist and co-founder, the incredibly talented and lovely Miss Molly Trotter Gomez. Hey, hey, everyone. So this week, we want to talk about Thanksgiving. Like Michelle said, it's our 100th episode, and we all wanted to come together. And as you guys have seen, if you are inside of our private Facebook group, we do videos every week. And this week is special because it's all three of us. And this month is all about Thanksgiving and gratitude. So we want to dive into my family Michelle's family, Molly's family, our GPA family, which is all of you, and of course our Christ family that is global all over the world. And obviously, first and foremost out of anything is we want to thank God for everything and the worship and the church and everything that it has provided. So Molly, why don't you talk a little bit about your family and what you're thankful for most as we kind of dive into this 100th episode? Yeah, that's so good. Well, I'm definitely faithful for my family and probably some ways that are going to be a little bit different. So my family's supportive, but in ways that are, it's funny because I've always looked at my family being like, why don't you understand and get what I do? Well, guess what? Just because God gave you a vision doesn't mean other people are going to understand it. And I have tried for years to get my family to understand here's the calling that is on my life, but no matter what, like they've been there to support me. They're there when I call. They're there. How are you doing? How are you and Johnny? How are you and your husband? Like they're always there. And they're that steady piece that I can always turn to, to be like, mom, I just want to talk to you. And I'm so grateful for that because I actually have a really close relationship with my parents. Um, I'm really grateful for my family in the sense that uh, we actually really make a point to take family vacations uh, once a year or every other year. And not a lot of families do that. So we have that homestead of like, you know what, we want to be able to intentionally spend time together, whether it's on the holidays or go somewhere. And this year we're going to be going to Hawaii for Christmas, which will be a little bit different. And I'm like super excited about that because I mean, I'm grateful that we even just get along. We're not going to rip each other's heads off like on vacation. So I know that's not necessarily the same song and dance for everybody else. But no matter what, no matter what the support has looked like, whether it's something that I wanted to look like or whatever, they've always been there. And I'm really grateful for that. And I'll tie it up with this. I'm just grateful that and thankful that my parents are still married. You know, at the end of the day, like 35 years and still married and they've gone through a lot and it's taught me a lot going into my new marriage with my husband. And so it's just been um, really cool to have that foundation. So that's uh, how I'm thankful for my family. I love that. I love how, you know, you're dynamic with that. And you said you guys are going to Hawaii for Christmas and the fact that they're just so supportive. And that kind of leads me into my family. My family, they are supportive, but I will definitely say that my family is, we're, we're a little crazy. Sometimes our gears don't necessarily match, but if I'm thinking about this year and I'm thinking about everything that has transpired, and the way that I have lived my life and the way that Christ has really come into my life and really shown up in the most magnificent ways is I've, you know, I've said this before, I think inside of our groups and I've had many conversations is I have been praying for my parents to come back to the Lord and my father has, we've had many conversations over the last just couple of weeks um, in November and he is coming back stronger than ever. He was hurt by the church for many, many, many years. And so he stepped away and he was very selfish in a sense that he was always really concerned about himself and he always made things about himself. And now that he has come into this new season and we like to call it, I guess, in our family is, you know, our baby journey, because we're still little babies in Christ. We're still learning. We're still going through it. And 
he said, I totally understand why you live the life that you live. And for me, that right there was just such a gratitude moment because he said, hey, I know that you wouldn't have been able to get through everything that you've gone through and everything you've experienced without him. And the way that I view you is so much different. And so for me, that is, that's a huge thing that I'm thankful for. I know that as long as I stay consistent and I stay in the word and I just continuously pour that into my family and my immediate family here, my friend family, I like to call my friends who are family as well, and my work family, you ladies, it's, I'm just, I'm so thankful for this time and I'm thankful that God is just opening so many different doors, no matter, you know, if certain ones are being closed or not. So I think it's so important that you just stay in prayer like I have been and you just consistently stay in that because without it, I guarantee you, I would be asking for so many different things. And instead of asking, I'm just filled with gratitude. So that's definitely what I'm super thankful for this Thanksgiving and this month and this year in general. Wow. I love that so much, both of you. And I heard it said once that your family is either an example or a warning. (laughs) And I think that that can be both true at the same time. And isn't it awesome to watch the transformation in your own immediate families happen Ferris, as a result of who you are becoming, isn't that amazing? And then same with you, Molly. I mean, just because you're on different journey with your family doesn't mean we can't still learn. I learned tons from my family when they oppose the things that I do. Like that's been a, one of my biggest, um, one of my biggest, the biggest catalyst to growth is when my family has been like, you can't do that. (laughs) Like, Oh really? I'm going to go do it. Um, I'm so thankful for my family. Those of you that have like kind of followed my story. I had my first grandbaby last year, a couple days before Thanksgiving. So this year, um, so much has happened this year. As you all know, I had my daughter, my oldest daughter, who's 31 when I was 16 years old and she became a mom last year. I have my son, Jacob, who's 29 this year and the baby who turned 19, she moved out a few months ago. So, um, it's a whole new season for me personally and my family. And I thought I was prepared for it, to be honest with you. I really like, I, I mentally, I was like, I'm so I've got this. I've been a mom for 31 years. I'm so going to be okay. And it was a huge, um, like gut punch to me when Savannah actually was gone. And I feel that what happened for me in that moment was the grief of my daughter growing up and moving out my first daughter, my son growing up, moving out. And then Savannah, you know, the little youngest growing up and all came together at one moment. And I am so incredibly grateful that for the last 21 years, I have had this amazing relationship with my husband that I know so many people struggle when their kids move out. Like there's the divorce rates really high and like people go a little nutty. I I could see that. Absolutely. I can see why that's happening. But I think this year more than anything, my gratitude is um, because I feel like God prepared me for this moment because of all that is going on with GPA. Um, If I didn't have that, I think it would be a lot harder because I could have, I just threw myself into like, okay, what can I, how can I busy? Can I, can I be to kind of distract myself? And the fact that I have such a great partner, my husband is amazing. Um, we still have fun together. We still like hanging out together after all this time. And, you know, we're getting to enjoy a whole new season. We just sidebar, we went on two like dates this weekend and he's like, he said something about date. Oh, we're having, you know, a night alone. I'm like, we're alone every night now. This <laughs> is so like every night is like a date night. It it's not, but it's just a new, I'm really grateful for this new season that God has um, both of us in. And I'm so incredibly grateful that by the grace of God, literally by the grace of God, all three of my kids are happy. They're healthy. They're independent as much as I'd love to have them all living in my house with me. They're all just out there in the world, forging their own paths. And they're all three different and they're all different humans with different paths. And I'm, I'm really, really thankful for that this year. Well, that. That's incredible. Um, Molly, I, I'm going I want all of us to answer kind of this next portion because it is pretty much the heart and 
really with the hundredth episode of GPA is Thanksgiving for the GPA family. I know that I never thought in a million years that I would be working with women on a daily basis. I never thought that I would find such solitude and such, um, what's the word is, you know, camaraderie. I I just, I guess connected or, you know, comforted with the GPA family, not only for all of our members and all the women that are inside of our group, but you know, this family. And if uh, you guys weren't at the event that we actually hosted, we hosted our very first ever meet and greet. And in that event, you know, Molly's husband was there, which was incredible. I came from out of town. And when I met him, I felt like I already knew him. And so I had to tread a little lightly because I was joking around with him and talking with him like I already knew who he was. And I think that just shows, um, you know, and obviously Bobby, it's, you know, Michelle's husband. He's he's such a delight. And he's, you know, I've met him multiple times, but, you know, it was just like it, it just meshed so well together. And it was just the conversations just flowed. And it's just, and I think that's just a huge thing is just to have that extension of a family, even though that was the first time meeting Molly's husband, I already felt like I already knew him. And at the end of the night, I don't know if you even know this, Molly, is he said to me, he said, you are like the big sister that I never had. And I was like, yeah, that's me. And he goes, yeah. He was like, you know, he was like, you're super sarcastic. He was like, and to the point, he's like, but you're funny. He was like, I love it. So it's, I'm so thankful for the GPA, you know, group. I'm so thankful for the family because whenever I'm in crisis or I'm excited to share something, these ladies are the first two that are on my mind immediately. And I'll be really honest. I, for a long time, was a little nervous about that because that just shows your growth and how you're shifting. You know, you're, you're so used to calling certain people. And when that shifts, it was kind of like, okay, well, can I trust them? Mm -hmm. And can I get, put my full faith in them? And I can, you know, honestly sit here and say that I can. So it's, you know, I'm super grateful for that. Mm. Oh, I love that. Oh, okay. I'll go next. Um, so I want to speak to the, the husband part because there was a time where my husband had a client out in, uh, where Ferris lived. And so we drove from California out to Vegas and it was so last minute. And there were so many like issues that we ran into his rental car broke down that I had to pick him up with our car. We didn't have a place to stay and never met Ferris in person up to this point. She opened her home, her and her husband were just like, come on in your place is my place. Do whatever you need. Um, cause it was so last minute. And so it just goes, it goes all the way around, like all, all the above. And that's so cool. When you find people like that in your life, you're just like, oh, it, you can breathe a little bit easier. You're not having to like put on this facade of like, okay, who are you really? Like, you're just like, come on in, like, just as you are. And I absolutely love that. Um, to the GPA family. Oh my gosh. I could say so many things. Um, Ferris and I always say this, we say GPA is end game. And what is that? I want to be doing this until the day I die. What does that mean? I want to be serving God's women, God's people in this capacity of showing them there's so much more out there. There's so many limitations that people put on themselves that don't need to be there. And it's been put, it's put us in bondage for so long. So really be able to be that, that light, because all of us who accept Christ, like we are the the lighthouse and Christ is a light within us and it gets to shine and being able to do that day in and day out. It doesn't feel like work. It doesn't feel like a drag. It just feels like there's going to be something so much bigger than I could ever explain. And everything in my life, I always want to partner with God. So when the end result comes, it's like, look, I couldn't do this without him. The guy, there was no way that I could do this on my own and being able to do it with Michelle and Ferris has just been incredible because we're all very strong personality, very vision focused. And to get us all to like, really like agree on things and move forward doesn't happen hundred percent of the time, but it happens more often than you think. And it's really cool to see just all of us in our zones of genius to really be able to move forward. And we get so excited. Like Michelle said, if you could only be a fly in the wall for these conversations, it gets me really excited because I've been searching high and low for people like that in my life that I can have these bigger conversations with that get it, that are excited, that can add on top of it and not make me feel some type of way 
because they're not ready for that. They're not ready for growth. They're not ready to move in that direction. I've always had people in my life kind of try to pull me down to where they're at. And I'm like, no, no, no. Like I need to stay over here. Like this is where God's calling me. So whether it's the the ladies here internally with GPA, whether it's the women that are inside the community, the ambassadors that we have, um, the people that just breathe, breathe life into everything that we do. It just makes me feel so grateful because this is home for me. And then I get to be at home every single day in a sense, because of what I do doesn't feel like work. And so that's my gratitude in the short of it. And I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Mm. Ditto to what you both said. I, I know you guys have heard me say a million times, I've prayed you into my life for at least 10 years before I ever met you, which means you guys would have been children. <laughs> you guys were babies and I was praying you into my life. Um, it's a true, true testament to, um, the power of transformation and how, you know, God will, if you let him, he will have his way in your life because I kind of swore off <laughs> many times women in the church, women outside of the church, women in business, women outside of business, because um, those relationship <laughs> relationships have been super toxic in my life and been some of the most painful ones that I've experienced just through betrayals. And, you know, you guys know you've been through your own things. So this, the, first of all, being partnered with two women. I mean, I could that alone. And then being in this community with all these other women and having the opportunity every day to live out this mantra that there's no competition in the kingdom. If you, if you're listening to this or watching it on YouTube or watching it on our, our, you know, Facebook or social media, we literally live that. And everything that we're creating inside of girl power Alliance has that as a common thread, no competition. There are a lot of people that use it as lip service, but we're like living it. Everything we do, we want to create an environment where you succeed, where your relationships are bigger and better, where your brand is seen more, where you're uh, making more money. And to be around women that are all like that, I mean, if you didn't believe that there was miracles still today, that alone is a miracle. And it's becoming... Um, a movement. <laughs> it's becoming a movement. I just have chills when I say that I could not be more grateful for these two right here with me, make me cry, the community, all of the women that we have met, all of the women that we collaborate with and work with from all the podcasts, all 99 of the other podcast guests, um, the women that are going to be a part of our event, activate all, you know, a couple, several hundred women on the Facebook page on the group, my gratitude runs so deep. I just, um, I'm like over overflowing with gratitude for the amazing women. And guess what? There's so many more coming. <laughs> like there's so many more women coming. They don't even know who we are yet. And they are praying and wishing for you. If you're listening, it's you, they're wanting you. And I just couldn't be more grateful for everything about our community and every facet of it. I love that so much. And I love hearing both of your sides to it. And that kind of goes into our next segment of, you know, our global family in Christ, our global family in Christ. And we can even tie in, um, you know, the church and your community and to be thankful for that. And both of you had said, you know, it's really difficult to work with women sometimes it's always kind of been this narrative and I am a huge fan of TikTok, and I will say it loud and proud here um, on her recording here, but there is this one TikTok that I see all of the time and it's, I don't know if it's just God's way of showing me different things, but it says, if you don't know now, women are actually supporting other women. So, and that's something that I think is such the core of GPA is that you know, if you win, we win. Yeah, we yeah. want to celebrate your wins. And I've talked about this before. We also want to celebrate you and your losses. We want to be there to support you when things may not go exactly as planned, but we all know God has a plan. God has his perfect timing. And I know there's been times for me where I have to sit back and be like, okay, that didn't work out and that's all right. And there's been many, you know, women that I've interviewed on our podcast and on our episodes to where in that exact moment, 
is exactly what I needed. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's been so powerful and I'm sure Molly can attest to it. And Michelle, she has talked to so many of these women as well. And we're just, I'm just so thankful for the women all over the world. We, we have many different, um, you know, courses and things that we offer inside of the GPA membership and with Radiant Leadership Academy, we've had women globally and we have a course that we're doing now in an academy, the last one for this year. And there's women all over the world that are hopping on these calls weekly that are, you know, intentionally coming to these conversations, wanting to grow and really sharing their heart of the fact that they were a little nervous to be in a huge area with women, to be surrounded by women and sharing, you know, some of their deepest you know, troubles or maybe their secrets or maybe things that maybe their own family members don't know about. And so I'm super thankful that, you know, our global family feels that comfort that I feel because I think that's super important. I love that. That's so good. I would want to say something to the church. Um, the church needs women like us, point mm. blank period. Like that's, that's the biggest message I could say. Amen. Church. I've had so many conversations with other women being like the church has done a lot of good, but has also done as dirty. And there's a lot of scarcity and I see it in a lot of women and they're just like, I don't know what to do. And that's what gets me excited about GPA and the impact that we'll have. And it's not so like, okay, how are we going to get these members in here? And how are they going to see us? God already has a plan for that. Amen. And right now we're in such a like momentum growth phase of just like these Holy Spirit filled ideas that have never even crossed any of our minds before. And we're like, whoa, this is going to be epic. And it's for the, it's literally for the impact of the kingdom and women are looking for something like this. So that is in short, I mean, I'm going to keep it that short. That's it. Like the church, we're, we're coming for the women. We're coming for the heart because they know they're meant for more. They're looking for that outlet of true feminine leadership feminine mm. leadership. And that right there is something that has been so muddled. And Michelle, you say it best. When you think of leadership, who do you think of? And people say Tony Robbins, John Maxwell, all men. But especially when you look at Radiant Leadership Academy and the women that are coming out of that 16 week program, seeing their hearts, their minds, their relationships, their businesses, everything about them transformed. They're unstoppable at that point. And women will be the catalyst for this revival and the change that we're seeing because they're just like, I, I need to do more. What can I do? And this is the foundation for them to learn and be supported. So uh, that's what I would have to say about our, our global impact. And I'm really excited. This time next year is mm. going to look so different and all the glory to God. And only he knows exactly what that's going to look like. Amen. Amen to that. I'm uh, to speak on what I'm thankful for when it comes to kind of the global community. I am so thankful for churches in other countries that I get to watch because of technology and podcasts that I get to listen to wherever, where other people's growth becomes my growth. And that is such a benefit. And I think that we kind of, I don't know, maybe take it for granted because it's so easily accessible. You're just on your phone or social media or whatever. I'm so thankful for that. I've had so much growth because of things that I could access via technology that I would have churches in obscure towns in the United States that I would have never heard of, but because I ran across a sermon or a podcast and I just, am, I'm so happy for the work that God does globally in other people's lives, because I get to benefit from that too. That's, that's amazing. I, I love both of your guys's, you know, outlooks on it because, you know, at our event, and I believe Brandy had said this, you know, the enemy knew why he had to go after Eve, you know, so, so long ago is because he knew her potential. And that's really a huge thing with GPA is the enemy knows the potential of women and he wants to keep it hidden. So whether it's been the church or whether it's been your inside of your own communities or whatever it has been to where we've had to masculate ourselves to even be noticed and Molly touched on, you know, you can't really think of, you know, women in leadership because there isn't that many that really have that huge impact. And if they do, they're very masculine because we have to, you know, match what is out there. And that's why, you know, with GPA, it's such a huge different uh, change. And that's 
that's why, you know, Michelle talks about her story. And if you guys don't know how this all cultivated, she talks about how God spoke to her and said, there's going to be a massive shift in the church. There's going to be, women are going to be the catalyst. And, you know, we believe that wholeheartedly here. And um, before we head off and, you know, you guys are spending time with your families this week and, you know, celebrating and being thankful, just know that there are some people out there that aren't going to be celebrating. There are some people that are going through some really tough seasons and we just pray for you. We pray for them. We pray for your circumstances, whatever it is that you're going through, whether it's good or bad, that we are here for you. And that is the biggest thing. Um, and my last point is I'm super, super grateful that for the very first time since GPA has launched a little, almost two years ago is we are going to be in person at a live event activate. And we have been talking about it so much because it is something that we are pouring every ounce of energy, spirit, our souls, everything into this event. And we want you there. We want you to activate your soul. We want you to activate whatever is inside of you. Maybe there's that one little missing piece that's going to take you from A to B. And we believe that's activate. So um, definitely get your tickets. Um, we are still looking for tons of vendors. We you know, have limited spots. So make sure if you have something you want to share with all of these lovely women that are just like you and just like us, we want you to do that. And um, all that information will be below. And it's also going to be in the show notes and also get your tickets. I mean, we have specials right now where with your ticket, you can be on a payment plan, which is very rare for an in-person event. And this will be in Dallas, Texas. So April 7th through the 9th super excited about that. And I'm just grateful for the opportunity to share the stage with other women that are just like us. If you guys don't know the lineup, the lineup is insane. And we just released that we'll be having Auntie Ann Byler. If you've ever had an Auntie Ann's pretzels, she is going to be there. Um, we do have our last, you know, special guest that we'll be announcing, but you'll have to stay tuned for that before that gets announced. And do you ladies want to say anything about Activate and what you're excited about? Well, I'll just say we have Black Friday specials going on, and I think this comes out the week of Thanksgiving, so it'll be Wednesday for what starting on Wednesday, which I think is the 24th of November, the 24th oh. through the first. So, like some really awesome Black Friday stuff. If if you're even remotely interested in up leveling your leadership, RLA. Um, if you do RLA and activate, there's a pretty significant saving. So stay tuned for that. And yeah, I would just say this, like. I believe God already knows who's supposed to be there. And so if you're feeling it inside of you, don't ignore it because if he's telling you, I, you, if you're thinking, yeah, I think I'm supposed to go to that. Then you are supposed to go to that. Go be obedient to what he is asking. Invest in your future, invest in your business, invest in yourself, invest in your faith and invest in other women that are going to be there. Cause if he's nudging on you, then you're for sure supposed to be there. I love it. No, you guys tied it up perfectly. And every time I think of uh, Auntie Anne, I literally want a pretzel. I mean, I know I'm just throwing some humor in there, but I, I freaking love hey. those things. So not that they're going to be there at the event, but she's a phenomenal speaker. And to know the woman that created that massive chain, I mean, let's just think of that aside from the pretzels. Like there's so many amazing women that will be on that stage. You'll, you'll be able to really lean in and learn from um, it's going to be absolutely incredible. And so I'm excited. Just like Farrah said, I'm blessed to be able to share the stage with so many amazing women. I can't wait to learn. Even though we're putting on the event, I'm going to be there front row, like pen and paper. I'm getting my notes because I know that God's going to have downloads for me as well. And so obviously he, like Michelle said, if he's nudging on you and said, Hey, this is for you answer that, go for it. You know, especially, I mean, if the pandemic taught us anything, things could be yanked away like really quick. So oh, man, don't sit there and wait and be like, oh, there'll be another one. We don't know. You got to capitalize on the right now. And if the pandemic again, taught us anything, what aren't you capitalizing on? What aren't you putting your focus on that God's been nudging you maybe even for years that you haven't been doing. And so that's just something to kind of wrap things up and to glean in on and, you know, be thankful for those nudges. 
because once he goes silent, you don't get those. I mean, that's pretty hard to, to get back, not impossible, but really press in and having a, a thankful heart and a heart of gratitude really, really helps you get in that state. So I'm always blessed to be on a podcast with you two ladies. This is always so much fun. So um, happy Thanksgiving to everybody that's been listening. Happy Thanksgiving and thanks for sticking with us for a hundred podcasts. I guarantee you the next hundred are going to be even better, (laughs) even better. So have have an amazing week and uh, don't forget to, in addition to being grateful, be generous out there. Some people, the holidays are the worst time of the year. Be generous, um, have, you know, compassion for others. And, uh, you know, just remember as you're walking around, you could be the only Jesus that people ever, ever encounter. So with that, thank you so much, ladies.